Hi, my name is Tom Greenwood from the Sustainable Design website, ESPDesign.org. I'm going to give you a short introduction to sustainable design, reality or dream. There's a lot of talk about sustainable design these days, so we thought it would be useful just to cover a few of the basics, including what is sustainable design, is it really possible, and how can you as a designer, project manager, CEO or entrepreneur actually make it happen. So first up, what is sustainable design? The term sustainable design is often used to refer to environmentally responsible design, but in recent years it's taken on a more holistic meaning to cover a broader range of issues, and is now commonly taken to mean design that delivers a profit on the triple bottom line. This means that the product, service, building, vehicle, or what have you, that you're designing should not only be financially profitable, but also needs to be beneficial to society and the natural environment. Now that's a tall order in itself. There's a key thing missing here that sometimes gets forgotten when looking at these three issues of sustainability. And that's function. When you're designing for sustainability, don't just think about the environment, society, and your financial profits. Think about what the product is actually for. It sounds obvious, but all too often, design projects focused on sustainability prioritize an issue such as the environment over the product's actual purpose. And the reality is that if a product isn't fit for purpose, it won't sell, it won't be used, and it will never deliver benefits that you've hoped for. Remember the basic factors of your design brief, such as performance, style, ease of use, practicality, and social acceptability. Because the first rule of sustainable design is that to design a sustainable product, you first got to design a good product. Now this raises another really critical issue that's very often overlooked, which is that the idea of a sustainable product doesn't really make sense. A product is a thing, and the aim of sustainable design is not to make individual things last forever but to ensure that we can maintain healthy environmental, social and economic systems. So sustainable design is really about designing in context of systems and developing solutions to make those systems more sustainable and more profitable. So we could define sustainable design as the design of flexible systems that can be sustained indefinitely. And we say flexible systems because the world is a constantly changing place and the only systems that will last for a long time are those that can adapt to the changing environment. Sustainable product design, on the other hand, should be defined as the design of products that aid or permit the sustainability of the systems in which they operate. Or a simpler definition now being commonly used is that sustainable design is just good design. Though I might say that we should turn that around and say that actually good design is sustainable design. And that if you pride yourself on being a good designer, then you need to start taking sustainability seriously. So with that in mind, is sustainable design really a reality, or is it just a dream? Well, it's certainly a necessity. The world's facing some serious issues now and in the future, such as climate change, waste mountains, poverty, economic instability, growing populations, and energy security. But if it's so necessary, then surely we'll all be doing it, and we'll be surrounded by great examples of sustainable design. So where is it? I've spent a lot of time looking and I've asked a lot of people and the sad fact is that there just aren't that many good examples. Sure, there are lots of good examples of products made from recycled materials or using fair trade principles or energy efficient appliances but designs that could genuinely offer triple bottom line benefits are few and far between. They do exist though, so here's my top three. This might not be what you were expecting but eBay is really a great example of sustainable system design. They've created a whole new market for second-hand goods in several countries around the world. They've helped to change attitudes and behaviour towards second-hand goods and encourage a culture of consumer-to-consumer -consumer trade. And let's not forget, it's very commercially successful. Now here's one that you might not have heard of. Onzo is basically a home energy monitor business with the objective of using clever product design to get people interested in their energy consumption and give them both the knowledge and the desire to consume energy more efficiently. The product itself practices what it preaches with an efficient solar powered unit and a simple post back recycling service. And when I last checked in with them, they'd received £7 million of advanced sales before they even reached production. This last one's a bit of a sustainable design classic. The tough, stylish courier bags from Swiss company Freitag are produced from reused materials including lorry tarpaulins, cycle inner tubes, and car seat belts. The business has been going for over 15 years and the bags have become cult fashion items around the world, recycling 200 tons of truck tarpaulins and 25,000 seatbelts a year. 
But why so few examples? Sure, there are a few more, such as the bicycle, the condom, Trevor Bayliss's wind-up radio. But we should be surrounded by examples. So what's wrong? There are a few reasons, one of which is the failure of product design itself, which almost completely neglects the concept of systems thinking, designing material products in isolation. Designers are given ill-conceived, prescriptive design briefs that prevent them from making anything more than small, incremental improvements, which is why the way we toast our bread hasn't really progressed in about a century. There's also a lack of knowledge of sustainability issues amongst designers and those others involved in the design process, as well as a lack of business skills in the design community, which means that designers themselves rarely progress to a position where they can influence serious change. There's also a strong aversity to risk in the business community. The fact of the matter is that businesses hate uncertainty. They tend to keep doing the same things over and over again, dressed up in slightly different outfits each time. Innovation is one of the hot words of this decade, but there's really not much innovation going on, with examples such as the hydrogen-powered Ford Super Chief shown here, paraded by big companies as their greatest achievements in innovation. And no matter what they keep telling us about the sustainability programs, many businesses just don't believe that sustainability is profitable. So as a designer, product manager or entrepreneur, what can you do to make sustainable design a reality? Well, firstly, you need to have the confidence to be a bit different. Those making the most progress in sustainable design are those with a wholehearted commitment to doing things differently. As Einstein so wisely pointed out, we can't expect different results if we keep doing the same things over and over again. You need to make sure that you're informed about the systems that you're dealing with, about sustainability issues, and about business. You should champion the cause, raise awareness of sustainable design within your organization, promote systems thinking, build bridges between design departments and management, and become a key decision maker. And if all else fails, don't wait to be given the opportunity. Do it yourself, start your own business, use your creative problem solving skills to solve a real problem in the world, and don't be afraid to fail. So many of our most successful and greatest designers persevered, believed in their ideas, and eventually they succeeded. So is sustainable design a reality or a dream? Well, that's really down to you as a good designer to produce good designs and prove that great things are possible. Thank you for listening. I'm Tom Greenwood. If you'd like more information about sustainable design, visit www.espdesign.org. And if you've got any great ideas or examples of sustainable designs, then post them here as comments or feel free to email them to me at ESP Design.